Welcome to today's presentation on student finance on behalf of the Welsh Government and Student Finance Wales. My name is Phil Lines, and I am your Students Finance Advisor. What we will be discussing today is the Student Finance Package and what I mean by that is the money available uh, to the students uh, for their fees and living costs. We'll also touch upon some additional support that they may be entitled to. We'll then go on to talk about anyone wishing to study an NHS course and how the funding differs. And then finally, we'll go on to talk about how they pay their loan back, how they apply, and just a few hints and tips on how to manage their money and what will happen next. So what we'll do now is go on to talk about the student finance package. Uh, in terms of COVID uh, and the, the pandemic, it hasn't really affected student finance in terms of allocation and allowances. Students are more or less receiving the same amount as they did in previous years. So student finance is split into two sections. You've got your tuition fee support, which pays for your course, and then on the other side, we've got maintenance support. Now, what I mean by maintenance is money that we give the students for their living costs. We'll also talk about scholarships and bursaries available from the individual universities themselves and also some additional support. So what we'll do first is talk about tuition fees. So tuition fees are currently capped at £9,000 per year in Wales or 9250 elsewhere in the UK. The tuition fee is decided by the university, so it is up to them how much they charge. For example, they can charge 6,000 or 7,000. However, most universities these days do tend to charge as close as they can uh, to, the, to the maximum. Now, the way that the students will pay their fees is as follows. Firstly, they can either pay the fees themselves out of their own pocket. And what I mean by that is they can use savings or if their parents are going to pay it on their behalf or if a company is sponsoring them through university, then that's absolutely fine. And it'll, it'll be a contract then between the person, the student and the university, how you pay your fees. However, £9,000 is a lot of money per year. We don't expect the student to have that money to hand. So what we will do is we will borrow the student that money and that's called a tuition fee loan. So it is a loan and it has to be paid back once the student has left their course or graduated. Everyone is entitled to the tuition fee loan. It's not based on household income or previ previous uh, credit searches or credit history. It's just the fact that you're going to university. So the student will fill out on their application form how much their fees are or their course code and then we will pay the university directly so the student doesn't have to worry about paying the fees if the student is going to a private institution then the un the private university can charge as much as they like in terms of fees I and mean, the the maximum that the student can borrow from us then is six thousand one hundred and sixty five pounds if you're not sure the difference between a public and private university, most universities are public. What we'll do now is go on to talk about the maintenance support, money that we give the student to live to help towards their living costs, such as accommodation, food, books, travel, social events, going out. The amount that the student receives, which we'll discuss in a moment, is a lot more realistic these days. It is equivalent to the national living wage, so it's like having a minimum wage job in a way. There are two types of support available here. There's the maintenance loan, uh, which everyone is entitled to. However, similar to the tuition fee loan, it is optional, so you don't have to take it out. And there is also free money from the government as well, called the Welsh Government Learning Grant. And that does not have to be repaid. The amount of loan that you get depends on where you live when you study. So if you live at home with your parents, you get a little bit less of a loan because we don't expect you to pay rent at home. If you go move away from home and live anywhere in the UK outside of London, you get a standard amount. And if you study in London, you do get a high rate of loan because costs of living are higher there. 
whatever you're awarded per year in terms of total amount, it's roughly divided into three equal installments. And you'll get the first installment at the beginning of your first term, the second in the second term, and the final installment would be at the beginning of your third term. However, you will get a letter from us once you're approved and date, giving an exact date of when you will be paid. This is the Welsh Government Learning Grant I was talking about that does not have to be repaid. Everyone is entitled to at least a thousand pounds and some of you can get up to 8,100. Now, the amount that you get is based on your household income. Now, what I mean by household income, it would be whoever you live with. So either both your parents, a single parent, guardians, or even a partner. If the household income is under 18,370, you get the full grant of 8,100, which you don't have to repay. If the household income is between 18,370 and 59,200, you get what we call a partial grant. And what I mean by that is the higher the income goes, the less the grant becomes. And if you are from a higher earning family, earning above 59,200, you just get the standard thousand pounds. What I mean by household income as well, which I will discuss later on, it's taxable income from wages or salaries or self-employment, etc. So this table here will show how much your student will receive on an annual basis. Now, there are three scenarios, three large figures in bold. The first one is 8,790. That would be for anyone living at home with their parents or guardians or partner per year. The middle one is the most common one, living away from home outside of London. So you get 10,350 a year. And the final one is 12,930, which would be anyone living in London, going to London to study. Now, the way that they work out how you're awarded that specific amount. So if we take the most common one, for example, 10,350 a year. To the left of that, you've got two columns, a grant and a loan. Now, the grant is the free money and the loan is the repayable one. And if you look at the first column, it says income, starts off at 18,000 and goes up in 5,000 increments to 59,000. What they both do side by side in the grant and loan column is add up to that specific amount. So if you look at 18,000 and anyone moving away from home outside of London, they get 8,100 of a grant. We then top it up by 2,250 of a loan to give you 10,350. And as the household income gets higher, the grant becomes less. However, the loan increases, always giving you the same amount. So students are entitled, all entitled to the same amount. However, based on the household income, they may get more of a grant and less of a loan or vice versa. And that's more or less all the money available from Student Finance Wales or you know the Welsh Government. It should be enough for their general everyday costs. Uh, by all means, they can top that money up by using their personal savings, uh, a monthly allowance from their parents, perhaps, or even get a job. It's totally up to them. Another avenue where you can get money from, and this is really nothing to do with us, it's just a bit of a tip where you can get free money from, is scholarships and bursaries from the universities. Now, scholarships and bursaries are free money, and it's up to the university that you're going to in how they give them and how much they give out. So they can range between £200 per year to maybe £3,000 per year. And it's up to them how they award it. They could just give you one anyway for going there, or they could be linked to your academic results, or if you have a, an outstanding ability in the specific field, such as sports and music, could be based on your postcode if you're local to that university, or maybe personal circumstances like your household income, for example. So do go on the university's website or call them up to see if you are entitled to the bursary because at the end of the day, it's free money as well. There is also a website called discoveruni.gov and it compares bursaries from different universities throughout the UK. What we'll do now is touch on some additional support that you may be entitled to. So you may be entitled to additional support uh, if you have a disability uh, or a uh, health condition or mental health or specific learning difficulties or if you even have a child or an, an adult who's financially dependent upon yourself and which i'll discuss uh, a bit more now so if you have a disability whether it be a physical disability 
long-term health condition, mental health issues, dyslexia, dyspraxia, specific learning difficulties, then you can apply for what we call DSA, Disabled Students Allowance. Now, this is a separate application form that will be filled out at a later date after you finish your main application form. And how you would do it is you would fill it in, you'd notify us of your disability or condition, you'd send proof of that. Then we would arrange for you to go for an assessment at a local centre to you with a medical expert. They would assess you and they would send the report to us, giving recommendations of what you would require for your studies. Now, this could be a computer, a specialised programme for your computer, someone to take notes in lectures if you've got learning difficulties, uh, if you've got physical disability, maybe transport to and from university, if you have diabetes, maybe a fridge for your room, for your insulin. So it's all based on your individual needs and it does not have to be repaid. Everything will be paid for on your behalf. Uh, if you do have a child, uh, we will pay for up to 85% of your childcare costs as well. And if you are a parent, then there is possibly an additional £1,821 extra for you. And that there's also other factors based on how much you receive as well. If you have an adult who's financially dependent upon you, then you can get up to an extra £3,923 per year as well. And this will be filled out in the main application form uh, when you answer the questions. What we'll do now is touch upon NHS funding. So any NHS course is most commonly the courses that appear on the screen now. However, every course is not there. So don't worry if your course is not there. And if you're not sure if your course is NHS funded, then do film the individual university. Now, in terms of NHS funding, and if you decide to study in Wales, so if you stay in Wales to study, there are two options for your funding. You can either go down the Student Finance Wales route, which is what I've just been mentioning for the past 10 minutes or so, where you'd receive a tuition fee loan, and a maintenance loan, and the maintenance grant. There is also another option as well. You could go down the NHS route where they would pay for your fees, so you don't have to worry about that loan debt. However, you have to agree to work for the NHS in Wales for two years after you graduate, or they may ask for their money back. And there is also a bursary that's paid monthly to you, and that will be based on your household income, similar to the grant that we offer. Uh, it is a lot less than the maintenance support that we offer. However, it's based on your household income. The only support you would get from Student Finance Wales if you did go down the NHS Wales route would be a reduced amount of maintenance loan, which is about £3,000 per year. So you need to work out really which is better suited for yourself. Do you go down the Student Finance Wales route where you would have more to live off? However, a bigger debt coming out of university. Or do you go down the NHS Wales route where you'd have less living costs, but a smaller debt coming out of university? So that you need to balance that out and you need to find out on the NHS Wales website how much you'd be entitled to on an annual basis and work it from there. There is more information as well on the website and it's on the middle bullet point there. It's nwssp.studentfinance.wales.nhs.uk. Here's a screenshot here of the, the website. If you do decide to go down the Student Finance Wales route and not to take out the NHS bursary, you would need to get confirmation in the form of a letter or an email from the NHS in Wales and send it to the email on the screen there. However, there is more information on the website as well. If you are thinking of doing an NHS course elsewhere in the UK, so England, Scotland and Northern Ireland, at the moment there is no NHS for those specific countries. So you would just receive the basic student finance, as I've been mentioning for the past 10 minutes. In terms of student finance Wales, uh, it's based on where you come from. So you apply to student finance Wales because you come from Wales. In terms of NHS, it would be the country that you're studying in that you'd apply to. And as there is no England, NHS England, Scotland and Northern Ireland at the moment, then your, your all your funding will come from Student Finance Wales. What we'll do now is talk about the student loan repayment, paying your loan back after graduating. So we've established that two types of loans on offer every year. There's the tuition fee loan 
and the maintenance loan. And what they'll do at the end of your studies is add both of them together and send you like a grand total. And the average student debt these days is about 50 odd thousand pounds. Now it is a lot of money and it does put a lot of people off from going to university. Hopefully after I explain how you repay, then it will put your mind at ease. So to begin with, student loan does not affect your credit rating when it comes to buying a house or future loans after you graduate. And it's not repaid like a bank loan either. So you won't make any repayments until you've left your course, either left it or graduated, and you're working and earning above £27,295 a year. If you are not working or earning below that amount, you're not legally obliged to pay it back. And we won't, we won't put pressure on you to pay it back. What happens is you provide us with your national insurance number when you apply and we tie the debt to your national insurance number. Once you start working and earning above that amount, then your employer will take it out your salary automatically, like tax, national insurance. So if you're earning above 27295 you have to pay it back, and your employer will send those repayments to us so you don't have to physically do anything as the repayments will be forwarded from your employer. If you are thinking of going self-employed, it'll just be done on an annual basis when you fill out your tax return. Now, if you're not working for whatever reason, for example, you go traveling, start a family, can't work, don't have to work, then we won't put pressure on you to repay your loan. If you earn £25,000 from the day you start working until the day you retire, you won't pay a penny back. It's as simple as that. The way that they work out how much you repay is anything that you earn above the threshold, it's 9% of that. So not 9% of your total salary, but 9% of anything above the threshold. So if you earn £30,000, it's going to be 9% of £2,705. Uh, there is also an incentive by the Welsh Government called the Partial Cancellation Policy, where when you start repaying your loan, through your salary, £1,500 will automatically be deducted from your balance. And it's just an incentive to help lower your balance and it's done automatically as well. Should you start repaying your loan and you finish work for whatever reason, if it's a short-term contract, illness, redundancy, maternity, whatever the reason, then your repayments will stop until you start earning 27000 again, if you ever do so. And as I said, we don't send threatening letters or tell you to pay it back. If you're not earning that amount, then you don't have to pay it back. Uh, in terms of understanding how the student loan works, there are things that I can't actually say due to, you know, uh, government's legislation and stuff like that. However, if you do understand how you repay the loan, there are certain benefits that you can have. Uh, and if you and I tell you who explains this brilliantly is Martin Lewis, the finance guy. So if you go on Google and tap, type in Martin Lewis student finance, he explains it brilliantly. Or the website is moneysavingexperts.com. This is how much that you would pay back to your student loan if you are paid monthly. So the left hand column is your annual salary, middle one is monthly, and the final one is how much you. Repay. So if you earn £27,295 or less, then you wouldn't pay anything. The average salary in Britain is about £30,000. You'd only pay £20 a month back. And obviously, the more that you earn, the more that you pay back. Whereas if you had a debt of £50,000 with a bank, such as a mortgage, you'd possibly be paying between £300 and £600 a month. So the, the amount that you repay is manageable as well. If you still have a balance 30 years from graduation, then whatever you owe us after that 30 years, whether it's a penny a pound or £60,000, then it's wiped off. And there's no fine for that. We won't chase you for it. It's just the way it works. So if you if you clear it off before then, then it obviously finishes when you clear it off. However, if you haven't cleared it off within 30 years, then it is wiped off. And most students will be repaying it for 30 years as well. 
Yeah, you may see some myths sometimes about repaying a student loan that you don't have to pay it here, you don't have to pay it there. The only time that you would not pay your student loan is after 30 years or that you're earning under 27,000 or you pass away. Uh, if you decide to go abroad or you may bankrupt or you go off on maternity, if you're earning above 27,000 whilst you're in those situations, then you are required legally to inform us and look, make repayments as well. As it is a loan, there is interest added to it as well. And interest is added from the day you get your first installment in your first year. And the interest whilst you're in university is the retail price index, which is currently 2.6% plus 3%. So it's 5.6% whilst you're in university. And then based on your income, when you leave your course, it could be RPI only if you're on a lower income up to RPI plus 3% if you're on a higher income. However, you will get a statement every year showing how much you've borrowed, how much you repaid, and how much interest added to your account. What we'll do now is talk about how you apply for student finance. It's all done online, studentfinancewales.co.uk. You would register your details. Application forms are due to come out at the beginning of March 2021. Now, a specific date hasn't been announced yet, so just keep an eye on the website or social media and it will be announced shortly. There will be a deadline of some time in May for you to apply. If you apply before that May deadline, we guarantee that your funds will be in place for when you start university. Now, a lot of students don't apply on time because they're not sure where they want to go because they put five choices in the UCAS form and they may be waiting for some results. What I'd recommend you to do is put your number one choice in or where you hope to go and get the application form completed and sent off. We do not contact the university until the day you start. So if you get your application form approved and you change your mind that you don't want to go to university or you change the name of your university, then you can just phone us up or log in and make those changes. And it only takes a couple of days to make those changes. Uh, the reason that we ask you to apply so early is because it takes a while to do some checks that we need to do. So if you're not if you if you're not sure about going to university, I would recommend you to still apply because it takes a long it takes about six weeks to approve it. You don't get any money until the university confirm your attendance on your first day. So if you decide at the last minute not to go, you can just phone us up and cancel the application form. Things that you'll need before completing your application form. So you need to prove your identity. And the easiest way to do that is provide us with your valid UK passport. And all we need is the number. And we verify who you are with a passport agency. If you have not got a passport, then you will be required to send in your original birth certificate. Not a photocopy, the original. And those are the only two forms of identification we accept. Uh, we don't accept driving licenses or identity cards. We'll also need a UCAS university and course code to determine when your course starts and how much your fees are. We'll also need a bank account in your name. It can't be in a third party, so it has to be in your name. So if you haven't got one, then you can just apply for a basic one online and you get a sort code and account number. We'll also need your national insurance number as well. It's a guarantee that you're in the tax system, therefore eligible to repay. and. If you haven't got one, then phone the HMRC to see how you can apply for one. If you want to be assessed for grants, which is based on your parents' income, you don't fill those details out. However, we do need your parents or guardians or partner's email address. If there's two parents or two guardians, then we would need two separate email addresses from you, and they provide their financial details separately. Normally, you don't have to send any evidence in, as it's all checked online. However, there are some circumstances where you might have to send in your passport, uh, sorry, uh, any additional um, evidence. So if that's the case, it can be un uploaded online. And it will explain how you do that. So in terms of parents or partners or guardians supporting an application form where you provide your household income, all we need to know from you is taxable income. So whether it's wages, salaries, if you're taxed on a benefit, or if you're self-employed, it will be net earnings from self-employment. We also need to know about 
earn earned income as well, such as interest from savings or if you rent a room or a property out. Remember, it's only taxable income. At this moment in point, you don't have to provide evidence. We check what you say or check your salary, etc. within with your HMRC because you have to provide us with your national insurance number as well. For students starting in September 2021, so for students going this year, then the, the year in question is the 1920 tax year. Now, I know that's not possibly the latest. That is the last full tax year for when, when before the application forms go live. So if there has been a big change in your circumstances from the 1920 tax year to now, and there's been more than 15% drop, then you can be reassessed based on your circumstances now and you'd fill out what we call a current year income form. However, you don't fill that current year income form until a later date. On the main application form, you still need to provide us with your 1920 details. You would then get uh, an approval letter, and then you would need to phone us up and say, your circumstances have changed. And then that's when we'd send the current year income form out as well. When you provide your financial details, uh, an email will be sent to you and you will just click on the link and create like a mini account and you provide us with your name, date, birth address and your employment details and your national insurance number as well. Here's the website here. Everything that I've discussed is on the website. Uh, there's quick guides, policy documents, rules and regulations, there's videos and there'll be two options at the top as well. There'll be login or register. Students will need to register name, date, of birth and address and then start the application form. If students have received EMA in the past or currently in receipt of EMA, they will need to give us a call because it will be the same reference number as their EMA. They'll still need to apply, but it'll just be the same reference number. But they will definitely need to give us a call because they won't have a password to log in and they won't be able to reset it either. So they'll 100% need to give us a call. We are on social media as well, should you want to follow us or like us, and we put a lot of statuses and tweets about when the application forms go live, deadlines, uh, useful information, and stuff like that as well. We do have a YouTube channel as well, and there's a range of videos. Everything that I've discussed on the presentation today is on there, and there's also parents' videos as well, looking more in-depth into what information we require from parents. Just a final part now, just managing your money and next steps. So the most expensive cost that a student will come across when they go to university is accommodation. Everywhere does vary. Uh, that's just an average on there. However, if they are staying in an suite, catered, mod cons, new build, it's going to be more expensive than an older build, perhaps. Uh, the amount that the accommodation providers or the private landlord charge is nothing to do with us. All we do is put the money into your bank account and then it's a contract between you and them. Just a few other costs to consider as well, just the usual general everyday costs. So once you approve student finance, you will get a notification letter from us showing you how much you get each term. And it'll have a barcode on that letter as well. You need to take that to the first day of your university and they scan it and that confirms to us that you've started and so you can get paid. That's the only way that you can get paid. After paying for your accommodation and other financial commitments, you might need to plan a budget and there's useful tools online to do that. Check out student bank accounts as well. If you go on the Martin Lewis website again, moneysavingexpert.com, he compares the pros and cons of, of most uh, student bank accounts as well. There's also an NUS card as well, where you get 10 cents off a lot of high street shops and restaurants. If you do get into financial difficulty, don't go down the route of taking out credit cards and payday loans. We all see them advertised and they target students. The reality is that you can't afford the repayments because the interest is so high. So if you do get into financial difficulty, speak to your parents, guardians or partners. And if they're not in a position to help you, then speak to someone at the university. They have designated members of staff who can help you in situations like this. And they are usually very good. So what happens next? So do your research on Student Finance Wales. Have a look at the guides if you're not sure of anything. Uh, the presentation today has not really been in-depth, but hopefully you know 
how much you can receive, etc. But if there is anything that you need to know more in depth, give us a call or have a look online. Apply after March. And if you're going to take anything from today's presentation, apply on time. Get your finances sorted as soon as possible. It takes about half an hour to do the application form online, and it's quite straightforward. Take your notification letter to receive your money. You can't get your money without them scanning that barcode and inform us of any changes as soon as possible, such as name of university, address change, etc., etc. Here's the phone number here, should you want to give us a call. If you do have a question that's related to your account, then I won't be able to answer that question, unfortunately, due to data protection, and they'd need to take you through security. So in first instance, I've always, always asked you to call the customer helpline. However, if you do have a generic query, then by all means, you can email me or give me a call and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And there's no silly questions when it comes to student finance. Uh, if you're unsure, just give us a call or email. Hopefully you now know the basics of what you need to do, how much you can get, etc. Uh, in terms of frequently asked questions, there's not much I don't think I haven't covered. In terms of, as I mentioned earlier, COVID, uh, you know, government restrictions, it hasn't really affected student finance in terms of your allocation allowance. If you decide to move away from home for university and there's a new lockdown or you have to stay at home for a specific reason, then you will still get the moving away from home rate. It's not your fault that you have to stay at home. Uh, in terms of student finance, uh, it's for any course in the UK. If you decide to go study abroad, then there is no funding available, unfortunately. Uh, just thinking of any other questions that are commonly asked. If there are any questions, just give us a phone call anyway. And good luck and stay safe. Thank you very much.